Okay, today we got some more. Do you mind? What? You want to talk about the welding tips we're going to do today? We got work to do here. Okay. Today, some more TIG welding tips. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get started on our welding tips. Nice echo. Yeah, I've been practicing. Let's see. Yeah, so. All right, so if you're into Volkswagens, metalwork, fabrication, this is the place to be. Subscribe now. Don't forget to hit the bell. Hit the bell, the little bell icon. That'll give you a notice every time we have a new video, which has been every week so far. It's not been easy, but we've done it every week. We'll do it. We'll keep so, it up. I want to keep doing that echo. Echo! Echo! Incredible. Try it. Echo! Now yours and this is good. Now. Okay, there's a couple things you want to do before you even start welding your part here. For one, I tacked it together with it, a space in here. You don't want to tack, tack your part together where it's flush like that. You're going to have to try to weld that seam. One, it's not as strong. Two, when you have a corner to corner like that, now you're welding the inside corner, which I said before. It was, it's pretty much the easiest weld you can, uh, you can do. When you when you got your part here, you, you, there's a couple ways you could just set the part down, which matters. For one, like if we were gonna weld this, that's not a problem welding across the top here. But to weld up here, now you got to go up. If we just take this part and flip it on the side. All of the welds will be the same direction, so you don't have up and down and all that. You're gonna be laying flat, and you can keep your hands positioned on, on the table so you're not shaky or anything like that. And, and you know, you always want your welds to go the same direction. So this one will go this way, then this side here when you weld it, it's gonna go the opposite way, but it's still gonna be from end to end, always in the same direction. Yep. So, and one thing that you actually taught me, what well, it helped me out a ton, is uh, when, you're, when you start your weld, and I'm gonna be in a weird position here because of the cameras, um, you wanna start in, uh, in, in, in an uncomfortable position because you want to be able to finish in a comfortable position. That makes it easier because once you get towards the end, you're like, oh my God, am I going to make it to the end? You'll be stressed. So get, you stretch it out to get as far as you can get away and still be in the right position and be able to get your, your uh, fill rod in there and work your way around. The further you go, they need to start getting yeah. easier. You won't be shaking or anything. Yeah, it starts getting easier. And then by the time you get to the end, you're like, oh, yes, I'm glad I did that. Yeah. And it makes a huge difference. That's the, one of the best tips that I've had learning welding today was that one. Yeah. So. It worked well. Yeah, thank you. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> That's what well, you're supposed to say, man. <laughs> you're welcome. All right, we're going to start welding around here. And one thing you want to do is we got to tack on the end here. But if we started the weld right there on our tack, it could loosen that piece up. And actually, you know, if it was being held down by that tack, it could lift it up. So what you do is you put a set, put another tack in front of it about here. That way you can go back to that the tack where you want to start, you know, the end. Obviously, you got to start on the end. So you can come back and you you know you hit the pedal, get it going. And when that weld, that puddle starts forming there, you know, you gotta control your heat so you don't blow the end away, but make sure you get like a full circle, a puddle, a round circle, not like a C-shaped puddle or anything like that. It needs to be round before you start moving. If you have to reposition your torch to get the right angle to get it to, to flow, just like I said before, it's like water. Once it's a you know melted and it's a liquid, you can get it to you know, you can get it to do different things by just aiming the tungsten in different ways. So get it, get it going. But um, the other thing you want to have your angle of your torch to be, you know, kind of 45 degree towards the way you're going, the way you're going to weld it. You don't want it pointed back or sometimes you're stuck and you have to weld like that, but try to keep it going forward, angled forward. That way the gas flow is going over everything and you can see what you're doing and, and move around and uh, keep your elbows on the table. It's another huge huge, huge tip. You don't want to be shaking. If you're trying to hold yourself up, you're just not going to be able to do it. All right, one big thing is being comfortable. You want to be comfortable wherever you're welding. Sometimes it's in the middle of a car in a roll cage and you're not comfortable, but you get as comfortable as you can. Um, and when you're in weird positions, you want to make sure your cable is comfortable, so to speak, I guess. Like right now, I got it draped across my leg so there's, it's not pulling down on the, on the torch. Sometimes you can 
if you're in a weird position, get it around your, your neck or something like that. That helps a ton because it will catch on something and mess up your weld. And uh, I think Ryan talked about having your hand on a block. And one other thing is when you're doing your bead, don't listen to any music. People in the background are gonna distract you, but you wanna, you wanna count. Count like a, if you're a musician, you know what I'm talking about. You're like one, two, three, four, one, two. Just count like that to get your rhythm going so you can keep the same bead going and you get that stack of dimes that everybody's looking for. All righty. Well, what we got here is, you know, that was as far as I can move without my hand moving. So you don't really want to try to weld the whole thing all the way down. Not that you can't do it, but you're going to have to drag your hand the whole way down. And a lot of times you'll get real unsteady with that. So what we're going to do is start and stop a few places. And that takes a lot of practice too, to get it to start and stop without you, you know, noticing it too bad. But um, so like Rob was saying, I went, I went as far as I could. I stretched it from the beginning and came back around until I got to the end. Start and stop, you know, stopped it right there. Now, what we'll do is we'll reposition it, move back to where we're gonna go. And when we start and stop, you're gonna wanna like heat it, heat it up, get the puddle started, kind of like right at the end, end of where you started, then back up just a little bit and add a little bit of filler wire. And the idea is you wanna make the width of that puddle the same every single time. And that's all about timing, like Rob talked about with the numbers. So, and how much filler ride you're adding at the same time. So you kind of want to count, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So focus really hard on what you're doing and it'll come out real good. Even if you're thinking about what you're going to do next can really mess you up. So even if it's the same job, it can mess you up. So focus on every puddle being you putting every puddle in there. We'll go ahead and hit it and finish up. And also, when you get to the end of your weld, the gas that comes out at the end is called post flow. You wanna keep that over your last tack before you just, don't just move it away like that. It keeps the atmosphere in there. So that way, when you do go and start your next weld, it'll still look pretty. It'll still have that same nice shine to it the whole way through. Now we're gonna, we gotta get back to this last corner here. So we're gonna turn the piece around. Remember like, just because that part's sitting here on the table like that, I don't have to squish around, you know, move the part into the best position for you. So that when you're welding it, you know, your your arms are flowing the way, you know, your hand's moving this way. You kind of want to just roll your, your hand like that to get your movement and not drag your hand. So, I mean, if I'm trying to do like this, you know, that's way more awkward than trying to do that. So parts just laying on the table, you can move it. Sometimes even on a car, you can try to position yourself so that way everything just goes nice and easy. Like this last weld, I don't want to try to weld it across like that. Just turn the part around. Last little bit, we done. Okay, nice welding there, Ryan. I know. Not airy at all. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> In case you're wondering what these are that we're welding on, is actually the the mounts that go on a beam. You know, the fabricated beam, and uh, that's what part bolts to the the car. Yep. So, one other thing to work on while you're while you're uh, practicing TIG is practice how you feed your wire. I mean, when I'm doing aluminum or if it's something big, heavy metal, I kind of do this where I can throw in a lot real quick. Or if it's smaller wire, I mean, you might just want to do something like that. But you can yeah. just sit there at the table or whatever you're doing and just, just practice, practice it. That's a whole separate thing. When, you, when you're when you trying to weld that one inch that we were talking about earlier, you can just pull out enough wire to actually weld one inch without having to feed the wire because you, that's too much going on right off the bat to, to learn both at the same time. So right. you just try to do you know one inch at a time, practice feeding the wire at you know, another time so that way you can do both at the same time and get longer welds. So. Also, another thing, is keeping your part clean. I always bead blast all the hot rail off of these and use some acetone or lacquer thinner or something to clean clean off your metal before brake clean is not the, the best thing unless you get the fumes out before you start welding. There's yeah. some nasty stuff going on there. You can even acetone your, your fill rods. Yeah, so. especially if they've been sitting out aluminum. 
to think about it. Mm -hmm. All right, question of the day. What kind of welder do you have? Do you have a TIG? Do you have a MIG? Miller? Lincoln? Harbor Freight? Whatever. Let us know in the comments below. I'm kind of curious about that. Yeah. yeah. What do you got? Ha, ha, ha.